Good morning, everybody. It's Thursday, October 22nd. I hope your day is starting out well. Courtney is on vacation, so over the next few days, you are gonna see my face as well as the face of Bess Williams um, for these daily devotionals. Sorry, this is being uploaded a few minutes late this morning. Um, I will say that after doing only a few of these during the pandemic, uh, Courtney certainly has a knack for finding content and inspiration um, to bring to you every morning, and uh, we all admire that. But something that has been on my mind since our church service on um, Sunday, when I read the scripture before Courtney's sermon, um, is related back to uh, Luke chapter 2, verses 40 through 52. And this is the story of uh, Jesus speaking with the religious leaders in um, the temple in Jerusalem during Passover. And um, while we certainly can take a lot away um, from what happened in the interaction between Jesus and the leaders, um, as well as the dynamics of what was going on between Mary and Joseph, Mary is the one that just uh, stuck in my head. And I think it's partly because I am currently the um, mother to a teenage boy who is 14 and not much older than Jesus was. And I have a girl, two girls, who are eight and 10, not much younger than Jesus was when he went to Jerusalem on this particular trip with his parents at the age of 12. So I'm gonna read this passage and then just um, give you a few thoughts on it. And the child grew and became strong. He was filled with wisdom and the grace of God was upon him. Every year his parents went to Jerusalem for the feast of the Passover. When he was 12 years old, they went up to the feast according to the custom. After the feast was over, while his parents were returning home, the boy Jesus stayed behind in Jerusalem, but they were unaware of it. Thinking he was in their company, they traveled on for a day. Then they began looking for him among the relatives and friends. When they did not find him, they went back to Jerusalem to look for him. After three days, they found him in the temple courts, sitting among the teachers, listening to them and asking them questions. Everyone who heard him was amazed at his understanding and his answers. When his parents saw him, they were astonished. His mother said to him, son, why have you treated us like this? Your father and I have been anxiously searching for you. Why were you searching for me? He asked. Didn't you know I would be in my father's house? But they did not understand what he was saying to them. Then he went down to Nazareth with them and was obedient to them. But his mother treasured all these things in her heart. And Jesus grew in wisdom and stature and in favor with God and men. So the part that really got me was the fact that Mary had a reaction very much like one I feel like I would have had as a mother. Um, I don't know, those of you who have children, um, we've probably all had moments in our lives where uh, we realize the kids are gone and we don't know where they're at. Um, I can't remember a particular instance, but I know this has happened to me. Um, and I probably can't remember partly because there's several years of my life that are like big blur and I'm surprised that we all survived them, um, mainly when the kids were all young, under the age of six, and there were three of them, and so there were a lot of toddlers in my life. And we would go to the store, and we would be, you know, doing all the things you do when you're at a store, um, and the kids at different ages all discovered that you could hide inside the clothing racks, and it was really fun to hide from mom, and so you would have this moment of like, ah, where's Zeke, ah, where's Della? and they would be hiding in a clothing rack, uh, giggling to themselves very quietly as you're looking for them all around. Um, so I can only imagine what it was like for Mary and Joseph for uh, three whole days um, when they're, they, you know, upon realizing that Jesus is not with them and then um, traveling the 25 or so miles they probably had to travel back by foot 
to get back to Jerusalem and then spending another whole day looking for him um, for a total of three days without their son, who was also the child of God whom they'd been entrusted with. That's a lot of pressure. And I can imagine they, they were a little frantic. Um, so just the relief, I can totally um, relate to the sense of relief that Mary would feel upon finding Jesus. And then after that relief, the frustration, maybe a little bit of anger at the fact that he didn't have the decency to tell them what he was doing or to be with them when he knew he was supposed to be with the caravan going back home. So um, I love the, the humanity in Mary's reaction, but I also love how quickly she realized um, what was going on and the depth of the wisdom that she saw in her child. Um, and this was a turning point for Mary where she realized that he is growing from a child into a man and that she was going to have to um, let go and let him grow up. And um, I love that Jesus quipped back and was like, didn't you know where to find me? Like, I'm not a boy anymore, mom. I'm here in my father's house doing the work I'm supposed to be doing. Um, and uh, so, um, but when they, went home, it says um, that Jesus uh, was obedient to his parents. So even though he had important work to do, he still loved and honored his parents and knew that his family, um, that he had a responsibility to his family and not just the work um, that he was meant to do here on earth. And so I just think that is like a beautiful uh, story of, um, that has so much humanity in it and it's a good reminder for me um, as a parent um, to let my kids grow and to um, pay attention when they're making good choices or they have something to teach me. Um, it's also a good reminder if you're not a parent um, to look at the relationships in your life um, where you might be mentoring somebody or you might be the boss of somebody. Um, you might have a protege at work and at some point, you know, um, when you've put in the work and you've trained them and taught them the things that they need to know to do the job, it's, there's going to be a point in time where you can let go and start thinking about the ways in which they're teaching you. So I hope that uh, this is a a story that you, we can all take and ponder in our hearts as Mary did and learn um, some pieces of wisdom that uh, when we're able to embrace can uh, bring us some real peace and allow us um, to let go of those things that are important in our lives and um, you know the, those relationships and those people and watch them soar and take a step back and learn from them.